multi-millionaire or if your country is losing out in Australia we're losing out heaps like food eggs um, electricity things like uh, plugs whatever you call it headphones uh, mobile everything's expensive and it's yucky and it's, it's, they say no 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 you're lying you're lying I said am I lying yeah you're a liar no Come here. So I have to take this person. Come here. Here's the shop. It's called JB Wi-Fi. And here they sell electric equipment, right? Come, go, show me something cheap. Oh, well, wait a minute. So if you buy from eBay, huh? Which is better, eBay or this electric shop? Uh, I see your point, my friend. I see. If you go to a website like eBay or something like this or some other website, it's a little bit cheaper, $200 cheaper when you buy this laptop or you buy these headphones, when you buy this technology. That's what we're talking about. I'm not lying. So I'm not a liar. I don't know how to explain it, but it's hard. Well, one day I have to buy a TV, right? And TV, they said, oh, it's 1500 and it can play computer games on it. Just plug your thing on this side. It's the best for computer games. Okay, anyway, anyway, what I'm trying to say is no one's lying. No one is a liar. No one is... Some people are, are incredible, right? They say things like, if we go to the, live in another planet we need to have a suit we need to have prepare we need to do this preparing um, and if we're not collecting the oil our country don't have oil everything's gonna go high our food gonna go high less less uh, bread money things in the markets like bread coffee milk sugar uh, people won't be able to buy that jumper shirt or uh, sweater or whatever or they won't get married properly or they don't have a life or it's incredible it's a bit too hard it's just but it's not it's not hard you have to put your mind and investigate put it out there do things you've never seen this person was saying that he's beautiful i love you for saying that some people say this some people say that let's hear this um um what do you call it, market thing? Let's hear it, let's hear it. I'm, I'm, I don't know where I am, but I'm, let's hear it, let's hear it. And uh, taking into consideration that that, that, it, that if they lie or something, or oh, fuck you, or get fucked, or motherfucker, whatever. No, 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 no. Technology in advance, like anything, anything, all going together, you know what I mean? Listening and reply and beautiful this, beautiful that, right? You are, you are, uh, love you, you are, thank you, you are, thank you for saying your words, anything out there, out there. And there were many, they were so happy we were doing this episode. Vicky wrote in, she said, can you please explain the difference between term and whole life insurance? I understand that whole can be quite expensive. And what is whole necessary? So let's first just differentiate between term and whole, Blanche, if you wouldn't mind uh, making that clear. The simple definition is term is for a specific time frame. You're getting it for 10 years or 15 years or 20 years to cover that time period that's most important for you. A uh, whole life is a form of one of the forms of, of a permanent life insurance. And that is for the rest of your life. As long as you're paying your premium, that insurance is going to follow you through the rest of your life. So that's really the simple, in simple terms, that's the difference. One is for a specific term and one is for the entire time of your life. Just to go a little bit deeper with whole life insurance, this has not just a death benefit, but also a cash value, right? Absolutely. So when we get into what each one... Okay, okay. I'm not very good at this, but I'm going to say this. There's a thing called... Um superannuation or something 
I'm very good at it. I, I'm shaking my head. I'm shaking my head, my hands, and I'm really nervous. Um, something to buy a house or something in a car or or the head floods or people are missing, people are losing out. It's incredible. It's, it's, it's fucked up, man. Really fucked up. But anyway, they got this superannuation investment in the markets and everywhere, like in the internet, cryptocurrency. Oopala. They're not doing very well. It's going up and then it goes down. I, I can't explain it. Some person said, oh, look, in the last month I made extra, like 5000 Now, this time, I only made 800 Okay, how can you make 5000 and then now 800 That's incredible. They invest in their money and then they're saying at the end of time they could buy a house, but it takes a long time, like... 11 years and they'll have a million dollars I don't know what I'm saying right right if they had a farm and the cows died because something or oh, the Japan um, in Australia Japan had this mosquito that came and they millions and millions of this mosquito if you are the certain part of in part of Australia this mosquito might and you get bitten and you might die it's death Huh? Google it. Is it the mosquito from Japan killing people in Australia? Google it. There's heaps of shit going on, man. Uh, they're saying that they're supposed to buy a submarine from France and they're supposed to talk to Joy Biden about these um, um, boats with the cargo or, or whatever it is and Joe Biden hasn't got time for everything and oh I don't, I don't. <laughs> it, and they're trying to go to uh, technology like new mobile phones and they're saying that um next to um um lake what's that where they in America um anyway anyway they've got all these things in America they and here too, and whatever it is, don't worry about it, man. It's incredible. They over there with the farms having problems. Here is, don't worry, man. All the, all the farms in New South Wales, which is an area of millions of kilometers, I'm scratching my head, man. Um, a lot is down, man. It's down. down. No, man. China, Japan, and Germany. And India, they're laughing, mate. They're laughing. Cow, no power, but bow. Go a little bit deeper with whole life insurance. This has not just a death benefit, but also a cash value, right? Absolutely. So when we get into what each one will do, you know, being expensive is relative because what is your situation? I think what happens is we information is put out there that something is expensive and it's only as expensive as the person that's getting the quote. Mm -hmm. So you can't really look at someone else's uh, premiums to determine if it's expensive for you because it's going to be different. So, you know, whole life or universal life, which is another form of permanent life insurance, it builds cash value. For the whole life, that cash value is built through dividends, and for the variable life, it's built through, you know, just like securities when you're planning for retirement. So whole life is great, or permanent life insurance, I like to say, because it's more than just term and hold today. You know, what type of permanent life insurance we're talking about is whole life. But normally, you can use that for college education. You can use that to build cash for retirement uh, tax-free savings. I mean, it's so many different ways that we can use that in instrument. Term is used if I have a child that's two years old and I want to make sure that that child goes to college and my income doesn't interrupt that. Then what I'm going to do is look at the age of my child and say, well, they should be out of school by age 25. Then I'm probably going to get a 20 or, or 30 year term. So I know in the event of my passing, that I have planned out um, for my child to continue their education. And my spouse would not have to worry about that. And we should just remind everybody that life insurance is a financial commitment that you make monthly, month after month. And so while, yes, how expensive it is is relative to everybody based on what you can afford, it's really important to map it out and make sure that if you get the whole life insurance, you can commit to that price 
that cost every single month because that is the risk. You don't want to. I get so many questions, Blanche, and I, the reason I bring this up is because I do get questions often from people who have whole policies. Then they lose their job and it becomes too expensive. They realize, you know what, I'm, I don't know if I really need this. It was, I, it was something that I inherited. I don't know if I need it. And so it, it's important to kind of look at long-term scenarios and at the end of the day, just starting with the minimum, I think is important at the very minimum, getting a term policy and then maybe building onto that. And if people are wondering how much this costs. I mean, it's a recent survey found that the average term life policy for a 35 year old woman, 20 year policy, half a million dollar benefit, about $25 a month. Very affordable. And working with my clients, because I work with a segment of clients that are in that retirement red zone, you know, like I share with them and their family members, the first thing you need to sit down is to really address your goals. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, life insurance is very important and it's always going to probably be a part of your planning. But when you sit down and you find out what your needs are, you will find out it's so, so affordable that you really actually increase the benefit because you did not realize that it was not that much. The cost was very low. Well, this transitions as well to the next question from listeners. And this was a popular question, which is just how do I calculate how much life insurance I need? I've heard a lot of different rules of thumb from the financial industry, things like eight times or 10 times your annual salary. Is that a good place to start from? Well, it's a good place when you're planning on your own to look at six to 10 times to make sure you're on the safe side. You don't have a professional there to guide you through the process. But the best way to look at uh, how much life insurance you need is really to sit down and really know what your income is, know what the debts are as of today, and know about any goals that you're trying to achieve that you want your family to continue to be able to do individually. You know, when I sit down with my clients, it's always goal-based driven. So I have my child that I want to go to college and it's going to cost probably about $150,000. You know, I have an income that's $100,000 and I want eight times that, you know, so you have to put all those numbers together. It's not just your income because your income is going to help continue the lifestyle for the ones you leave behind. But the additional is really guiding on those specific goals and making sure. So it's going to be different for each person and legacy. Sometimes we just want to leave legacy because it's the gift that keeps on giving. And in listening to you, Blanche, I mean, it's, reminding me that it's so important to also project your income growth as you plan for life insurance. If you're headed for a a raise or promotions over the years, and I hope you are, it's important to revisit the policy, right? As you, as you acclimate through your career and you start to make more, would you, would you agree that your policy should be something that you're visiting almost annually? Annually is something that you need to look at all your finance. Okay. I just like to say something as well about buying a car or maybe you're scared or you're scared, you're very, very scared or something. You're scared, right? Like, you're a ninja, right? You're, don't mess with me, motherfucker. We keep the F off my F off my hand, all right? We don't need this. That our part of our family, oh, they're going to die. They're going to die in a retirement village. Okay, okay, but... They find answers when they were working years and 20, 50 years ago, right? They were doing things, when, whatever, and they had houses and, and they got a lot of money that, that they're going to be, you know, you just don't put a person in a retirement center, my friend, all right? Because they're special for your family. If your family has to invest or, or have a house or they own, They've got cars and things, you know, and because something happened like an earthquake or floods or the food went up when there's this in the markets and that in the market, it's just not on, all right? Not on, not on. You should be able to invest your money into a marketplace to double, triple your money, or maybe it's not tripling your money. It's just there um, going higher every month and like you might... One month my own, like this person said, 300, 900, 1,000, 2,000. But at the end of it, there's money that is 
growing up, growing up, and and in and it is something that you need to learn how to invest, and if that also is paying for your for your doctors, private doctors, private this, private that for your tooth, for your blood, for things. And you're doing exercise, or maybe you don't know you're smoking marijuana. Who knows, my friend? It's not all about um, going for the kick and, and and killing the maneuver. And your food is going up, and you're complaining. It's not a pookie. It's all going together, right? You will only you will live this life that you're living now in your own country to provide the economics and the 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 investment and the life insurance. All right, right, right. It's very, very nice to you to understand me that it's difficult now that we live like this. My country here in Australia. I'm from Chile. In Chile, they just have a new president. They're gonna have to. Figure out for the pensioners in Chile. Uh, figure out how the people are going to increase the payment. What it? What is the peso versus American dollar? What is the peso um, combining like selling horses, um, wheat, uh, other things? Australia too. We can't sell our wine everywhere because it's hard to get our boats to go in the water to contribute all these different things that we get in and out and China keeps going on about they're going to destroy this, they're going to... <laughs> yes, the incredible fights after fight, World War heroes, people that go to uh, be an army come back and they say, oh, well, Jerry, Jerry, you came back, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jerry. You're... Man, it's incredible, all right? And now I'm going to go to the next episode because can't be all day in one, two, three, whatever, but you know what I mean, okay. Whoa, what's going on? This episode is brought to you by... Okay, 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 we're gonna go over here, okay. I don't know, um, sometimes I get lost, the technology is really high, we're trying to combine that um, things that you said or whatever you said or how you said it or where you said it and however you said it or you were saying it or they were saying it or he was saying it or they're into the technology to the technology to the technology to the technology I am I don't know I'm gonna go and make a coffee because I feel like a coffee but I don't have coffee all the time right because uh, I've got a tin that that is not very big, and hmm, certain time it runs out, and then you gotta buy more coffee, right? You gotta save your money. You gotta look after yourself. You gotta invest, and you gotta put it together. And 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 the country's going down the drain, and it's kicking the ass, and punching the mouth, and sporty, 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 sporty. Learn a little bit. Learn a little bit. Get a bit tough, mate. You know, God up there is praying for you. Someone is praying for you up in heaven, and or you going to hell. What's this, God? Come on, God. Don't be nasty to us humans because we did something wrong to you. No, God. Be high, please. God, 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 God is praying for you. You don't have to pray every day. You're supposed to have an angel inside of you. You're supposed to have powers in you. Like convert yourself into a lizard. You have created to be famous. you be created to be whatever. All going together out there, please. We start the, the the Verge started as a website called This Is My Next. It was a WordPress blog that you all started, and then I came on just because everyone wanted to make sure that they stayed sharp with writing, but also because we were all just we couldn't stop ourselves from wanting yep. to like comment on tech and review tech and say things about the news events that were happening. Yeah, I, that moment is actually really instructive. So we all left in gadget. We're recruiting data. Data comes on. He's our first big hire. We started a website just to host what became the Vergecast. This it was called This Is My Next Podcast because we didn't have a name. And we started the WordPress site just to put the podcast. You've got enough stuff on your phone. Uh, you can do Zoom on your iPad, but most people have done Zoom on their laptop or their, or uh, whatever, and that's just it's just a, a link to another tab that's the zoom call it's just like 
just like this podcast we're doing right now is is I don't know they they have an app I guess but we're I'm doing it on the Chrome browser um, yeah which is by the way Dieter there's a little bit of gatekeeping on the web mm -hmm. through Chrome through Safari through uh, I don't. I have no idea about Edge. I have no idea. But <laughs> no, Microsoft wants. Microsoft is desperately trying to gatekeep on Edge. Yeah, yeah. So there's a little gatekeeping there, but uh, but uh, anyway, I just wanted to. Uh, you know, when I was thinking about Dear Bone, I was thinking about that lecture in the cab, which took almost <laughs> no time to develop. Yeah. <laughs> Um, That's a very accurate. Well, okay, so let's talk about gatekeeping on browsers like Chrome, for example. Like when uh, a company makes a website and it only works in Chrome, I refuse to say that it is a web app, that it instead is a Chrome app, or if it only works in Safari, well, that rarely happens. It's a Safari app. This is another one of my favorite things I've done at The Verge. I spent, God, Neil, when did I first pitch uh, the definition of the web to you? It took like two years. It did take like two I, years. I just I kept on writing it and re erasing it and writing it and erasing it and uh, like talking to people and talking to people on the web and whatever. This whole thing got started because um, John Gruber over at Daring Fireball had published a post wherein he argued that it was about apps versus web, and he argued something to the effect of like anything that uses HTTP is uh, is on the web, and therefore apps are part of the web. And I was like, hang on. And so then I, I thought about it for like two years. And I landed on this post that I'm very proud of, uh, like, and now a brief definition of the web, where I said that in order for something to be on the web, it has to be linkable. Um, there needs to be a link, like you mentioned, the, the Zoom link, Walt. But then the second thing is it needs to be agnostic to the client. So there needs to not be a gatekeeper for it. It needs to be able to give me what it is it's trying to do using whatever computer or whatever browser app or whatever I choose to use with it. And unless the thing you're making, the app, the page, or whatever, um, gives you that freedom, I don't think it should count as part of the open web. That was a great piece. I'm not sure I read it contemporaneously, but I read it. Hmm. Uh, and um, the other thing you forgot to mention is, by being agnostic, there were no green videos and blue videos. <laughs> just, just, it was, it was no, no green bubbles, no blue bubbles, just... Yeah. We're all here. We could be using different brands of computers. I suspect we're not, but we could be. <laughs> and it wouldn't matter. And we could be using different devices, you know. Yeah. Uh, I got that lecture, and I, after all these years, I just wanted to say, I take your point. I take your point. <laughs> that's a big victory. That's a giant win for me. <laughs> Thank you. That, I think that's a good, an excellent place to take a, another break, here from some other folks. We'll be right back. Oh, hello, Gita. This is uh, Elvis from your Las Vegas wedding. I just want to wish you a successful uh, next chapter in your life and uh, always remember to rock on. Dear, it's your bud, Becca. Um, sorry if you can't hear me over the sound of the uh, crashing waves. I'm currently celebrating on a beach because the uh, competition on the channel just... Whew. Well, let's just say thank God you're finally leaving. No, I'm kidding. Um, Dieter, you've been an incredible mentor for me, and uh, it's definitely sad to see you uh, get going. I feel like you were just getting really good at Premiere, too. Uh, but anyway, Android trumps iOS all day, every day, so just happy you're going to uh, fight the good fight. Um, <laughs> I'll see you down the trail, bud. Hey, everyone. It's Lauren Good from Wired. And um, I had the absolute pleasure of working with Dieter for at least a few years at The Verge, which means that there are way too many stories that I can't possibly fit into this short little speech. But um, I think this sums Dieter up. The other day when Dieter texted me and asked if we could talk, um, I ended up messaging him the next morning at about 6.30, so it was pretty early, and he replied, good morning, LOL, glad to see we are both still, and then he put this in caps, old people who are up too early. <laughs> but I guess that story doesn't really encompass what 
a smart and kind and caring colleague and friend Dieter is. And um, this is something that I think Verge readers and Verge YouTube fans have really gotten a sense of over the years because who Dieter is really shows in his coverage. And I know he is going to be sorely missed both at The Verge and in the world of journalism. But I also know he's going to do great and just be a great person no matter where he is. So good luck, Dieter. I would say I'll miss you, but um, hopefully I'll see you soon. Lastly, the three of us have worked together a lot. It would be remiss if we had this whole conversation. We shouldn't talk about the news because Dieter is not technically a Google executive. But we have covered an awful lot of Apple events together in our time. There's one next week. But, uh, Dieter, I just want to talk about that. That I'm just going to take credit for it because it's the day you're leaving. Okay. I would say that we invented the sort of modern swarm and event approach, live log, live posts, immediate hands-on videos. That was something that we were doing before The Verge at our various sites. Uh, this week on The Verge cast, Lord this. The real people haven't even really gotten their trucks yet. Maybe a few have, but it's gone to mostly employees. And so that, that's, that, that, that is sort of the misstep that they made, was that there has not been uh, the sim similar level of trust in the company. They don't know that, that, that this is going to be you know, something that they will eventually re receive. They, they, it's a hope and a prayer at this point that you know, they'll eventually cars, get man. their truck. I love them. Can't get enough of them. Um, uh, one more thing I'll say about this. We had, uh, I think it was Polestar CEO Thomas Ingelitz on uh, Decoder, and we were talking about selling cars and this like dealer model and selling direct and all this stuff. And he was like, the scariest thing for a car company is meeting your customers. He's like, everybody <laughs> else in the car industry for 100 years or how even longer, right? They would make the car, they'd ship them to the dealer, you're done. And now we've got like screens, people are tweeting at us, we're selling direct. Like, he's like, wow, here you all are. Uh, much noisier than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the standard now is is that they have to respond because yeah. Elon Elon Musk is out there on Twitter talking a blue streak to to whoever lights lights him up about you know, hey we want to play Cuphead on on the screen. I mean, he doesn't respond. And, and he's to like, it. sure, yeah, that sounds cool. Uh, so that's like the standard now. Like, and everyone's like, why isn't the CEO of Polestar responding to my tweets? You know, yeah. like it sets like a very unreasonable level of <laughs> expectations. I think for yeah. customer interaction. Uh, and feedback. And yeah, obviously the dealers have served as like the middleman between the OEMs and the customer base for such a long time. But now you got all these new brands that are DTC. They're, they're selling, you know, uh, directly to the, their, their customers. They have to come up with something somewhat similar. It doesn't have to be the exact same as being a shit poster on Twitter. Uh, uh, but they it's do the future for all of us, Andy. If you're not shit posting <laughs> yeah. three times a day, I'm sorry, you're not going to make it in business. Uh, let's talk about this electric boat and then we should. Uh, oh yeah! Bring on Dan Yeah. Does it weigh more or less than the Hummer battery? Way, uh, well, that's a good question. But it definitely, the the battery is three times the size of a Tesla Model Y battery. Which is, <laughs> I was shocked by. It. I was like, wouldn't that sink the boat? And the guy's like, no, no. It's actually weight is good. Weight is good mm -hmm. for a boat because it, um, it it provides stability, and you can mm -hmm. like for water sports, you can create a wake behind you that people can wakeboard on. And I was like, if you say so. I gotta I say, weight is good for a boat are some deeply famous last words. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Wasn't the, the captain of the Titanic? Didn't he say something about yeah, that? Yeah, he was like, I love no, a heavy you don't boat. Need, no safety features are necessary. Have you heard that old sea shanty? I love a heavy boat. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's, it's so hot right really, now. really popular. Yeah. It's so hot right now. Can I just read this uh, investor list? The invest this is a perfect oh, investor yeah. list. It's like amazing. if I had if I had this money, I'd be like, you know what I want is a sick boat. And then you like read the investor list, you're like, I know who vibes with me. It's Will Smith, Kevin Durant, and Puff Dead. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Diddy. It's so good. It's really good. Like, you know, I'm, I'm just they were just like, in Miami and they're like, why can't I get a Tesla boat? You know, like, Will, like, I, Will I Am is somewhere out there. You no, know, he's the kiss of death. To... You keep him away. <laughs> okay. I'm going to change it, but um, I'm to go here. Okay. I'm going to change it. While I'm changing, I'm talking. Okay. Um, yeah, Leon. What's his name? Um, Leon Musk or whatever his name. Okay. <coughs> Oops. Um, 
here in Australia, okay, I always talk about Australia because this way, here in Australia, say you want to buy something good like a house next to the ocean or you want to do something incredible with solar panels on top of your house or you want to buy a little farm or you want to you wanna do something like buy an electric car or, or maybe you want to have an um, international um, program for rockets to go out of space in Australia, or whatever, whatever, whatever. But it's all expensive. Here with not many people are rich, rich, rich to do all these things. In America, you will have like a hip hop rapper or a music artist or someone buying this, or a boxer or a sport person. They're always buying heaps of things or something. And it's incredible over there. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, it's all how it is. But I don't, I don't understand it. You know what I mean? You, you, you <laughs> I, I, anyway, anyway, your, your better life in different countries, better understanding, better communications, better things. I love you. You love me. He hates you. He hates them. They hate them. So love, hate relationship, different countries, different things, who kills who, how's refugees, how's they going to um, uh, cyber attack or who's going to do this, who's going to get who and what is going to, whatever. It's incredible. Too many phones made or dodgy phones and people can't afford all those, all those things. Oops, I got the hiccups. Oh my God. Anyway. Anyway, so it's, it's about um, teaching yourself with your family and your kids and others around it that cultivating the culture of multi people with money and saving to future references. If you know what I mean, you should not just going high wire and kicking ass and thinking you're rich and you're just going to buy a bow, this, that, and you look so rich. No, you're going to have many things in your house. No, no, no. Just just relax and um, the future will take you forward by planning things, by doing things, by combining your inner feelings, in inner mindfulness um, beautifully, things that you want to, whatever is, you know. Anyway, but uh, I'm, I'm going to go to the next episode because something beautiful or love you or whatever you will understand only you can fight the power you want to be a ninja you want to be karate you want to learn and here we are trying to put whatever in you and me i don't know the answer but anyway this is abc news okay this is abc news making sense of oh i can't say it doesn't say uh, what is it a say up here or something uh, making sense of endless rain in its only march but part of the east coast has had more rain okay it's world record i suppose rain or whatever anyway um on the name of god um the society the people are trying to see whether europe it's going to stop this war with Russia and Ukraine. Um, the people are also saying about the war in America and this rap music, like we were saying, and all these other sport people who are in America rich. You know, you might be saying something all going together, but in respect, in honor, in your, your, your beliefs. You're beautiful. Keep it up. Keep it going. Uh, don't give up. This is it. We we'll love you, and we we'll love you, and we we'll love you, and we we'll keep loving you. This is ABC News Daily. I'm Sam Hawley. It's only March, but some parts of the East Coast have had more rain already than they normally get in a year, and it's led to those deadly and devastating floods. So, why is it happening? Today, Dr Kiara Holgate, a hydroclimatologist, explains the rare weather event that's brought some of the wettest conditions ever recorded. 
why there's still more to come. I'm Dr. Kiara Holgate. I study how moisture moves through the atmosphere to affect our rainfall in Australia for droughts and floods. I guess, first of all, I want to ask you, you know, how much rain has there been and how does that differ from years gone past? Well, in some parts of eastern Australia, in recent weeks, the amount of rain that's fallen is quite rare. So the amount of rain that's fallen in Sydney, for example, this year so far is completely off the charts. Mm. It's the largest amount of rainfall year to date that we've had since records began in the 1800s. Mm. And in other parts of the eastern region, say up towards Brisbane, the amount of rainfall that's fallen there is quite rare. Um, I saw um, someone from the Bureau of Meteorology posted just this week that it was so rare that it had a much less than 1% chance of happening in any year. Wow. So, yes, it's, it's quite rare, the amount that's fallen. OK, so that sounds pretty significant, actually. Mm. When did it start? I mean, take me back to when this weather began. Well, it's actually been quite wet for some months now. So if we go back to last spring, the Bureau of Meteorology was predicting above-average rainfall for summer and now autumn. And if you remember back in last November, it was actually the rainiest November on record. Welcome to the Climate Mortar Outlook for summer 2021-22. Summer could be wetter than normal across eastern parts of the country. Spring has been wetter than normal, with much of the rain falling in October and November. So with all that rain that fell in November and subsequent months, all of the catchments were filling up. So all of the soils were filling up, all of the rivers and dams were filling up. And so when you get extra rain on top of that, like we've had in the last few weeks, let alone so much rain, it's prime conditions for a flood. Mm, so there was so much rain way back in November and that really had a big impact now. That's right, exactly. What do you mean by the, the soil was filling up? The soil was still wet from November? So the soil is like a kitchen sponge. You know, it just soaks up whatever moisture you give it or perhaps a, another analogy is a flower pot. You know, if you put lots of water on it really quickly, you'll see it just flows out the top and out the bottom. Mm. If you put water on it slowly, it can soak it up, but only to a point. And that's kind of how a catchment works. In the soils, in the plants and the trees and the rivers and creeks, once those stores are full, any extra water from rain just goes as runoff. Mm. So what's causing the rain in November and then subsequent rain and to this point where we've just had so much rain. What's the cause of it? Well, there's been a series of rainfall events, and so they haven't all been caused by the exact same type of weather event, but the, the conditions underlying all these individual weather events are all affected by La Nina. And as you might know, we've had back-to-back -back La Ninas now. Well, La Nina is here, and the wet weather phenomenon has already unleashed heavy rainfall that's wreaking havoc across parts and of Australia. And La Nina as we know, typically leads to above average rainfall in eastern Australia. Just remind me, what is La Nina? Yeah, so La Nina, or its twin, El Nino, is a climate driver that starts over the Pacific Ocean, over the tropical Pacific Ocean, where the ocean changes temperature, and then this affects winds as the winds flow over the ocean. And the winds change the atmospheric circulation, and those changes to circulation can actually impact weather all around the world. So, hang on, and you said we've had two of these back-to-back. -back. What, what do you mean by that? The El Nino Southern Oscillation has a, a yearly cycle. It sort of um, starts up in sort of winter and spring, and it peaks in summer, and then it usually dissipates in autumn. And we've had two of these La Nina, or wet phases, two years in a row. And as far as I know, that's only happened twice before, I think, since the 1950s. Right, OK. So that's also contributing to this mass amount of rain we're having. Well, that's right. That's the interesting part of our research. We found that not only does La Nina affect our rainfall, but... OK, OK. No worries. You understand? They have um, La Nina, La Nina, whatever. OK?
Why don't they have El Chico, man? No worries, no worries. What are we going to do, say? They say in four days there's going to be more rain, right? For another 10, 15 hours. Okay, I don't know how this is. Anyway, I, I don't, I'm not a rain dancer or, or El Dia de la Muerte. I'm not a bad guy. I am making no changes to nothing. It's God. Where is God? Where are the aliens? Where are this technology that England's got to fly out of space and shit, England? Are we are we stupid or whatever? I don't know. It's sad that people has lost their mind with their future life and they got nothing. What do you, what do you expect? To cry now? Come on. Who created this madness of making a harp or, or a technology where there's, it's going to snow whenever you put things up in the sky or whatever? Or, or can we have teleport? Can we become Jesus Christ? Can we do this into our bodies? Can we do that? Can we put a chip into it? If we put the chip into our arm, will it help very quickly to kill this virus? Can we help someone special, beautiful, creator or something that will manage us humans? We don't want to cry anymore. We're sick of crying now and things are going up like petrol prices, oil. And ay ay ay, mate, it's pretty... And anyway. Contributing to this mass amount of rain we're having. Well, that's right. That's the interesting part of our research. We found that not only does La Nina affect our rainfall by increasing the amount of moisture that gets funneled into eastern Australia, but also climate drivers associated with the Indian Ocean to our west and the Southern Ocean to our south, all of these can impact our rainfall, which scientists, you know, we already knew. But what was unknown was exactly how these different climate drivers around Australia interacted with each other to dictate how much or how little moisture for rainfall was available in eastern Australia. There's always moisture in the atmosphere, but, you know, at some places and some points in time, there'll be more in one spot than another, and it flows along with the air currents, and that's what's typically called an atmospheric river. And they can hold a lot of water. They can hold even more water than a regular river on the ground. Oh my gosh, so it's a, a river in the sky. Exactly. The other notable thing was it just never seemed to stop raining. It just didn't seem to go away. It rained for days and days and days on end. Why is that? So apart from the climate drivers I've described, over recent times we've had a series of low pressure systems that have come across from the west towards eastern Australia and they're, they're blocked actually from progressing any further. And when those low pressure systems are just stuck in place, they just rain and rain and rain, there's just all this extra moisture being funneled into eastern Australia. So when those low pressure systems come along, they're really um, able to put a lot of that moisture from the air down to the ground as rain. So where is all the water actually coming from then? Well, that's a great question. And in our research, we've discovered that all this water is actually primarily coming from the ocean to our east, so over the Tasman Sea and the Coral Sea. And it can also come as far away as the Indian Ocean and the Southern Ocean. Mm -hmm. And also it can come from the land, so from forests and lakes and rivers. Right, so there's weather systems combining. It's causing a huge amount of rain. You know, we're hearing people talking about rain bombs. There is a rain bomb that is just sitting over the entire southeast. We have a rain bomb above southeast Queensland. I hadn't heard that term before. What is that? <laughs> well, I hadn't heard it before either. Definitely not a, a technical term that we use in science. Uh, I guess it. Um, people are trying to convey just how much rain is falling. Although I think it can be a little misleading because a bomb, although, you know, it's a very evocative wording, it, it's sort of a single event. Whereas what we've had with the rainfall has been a series of um, large rainfall events. We know Australia has been warming, you know, by about 1.4 degrees. 
I mean, is climate change playing a role here? Well, we can't say that climate change has had no impact. But what's tricky to say is exactly how climate change has impacted these kinds of weather systems or this collection of influences. Right. What we are confident about is that as the Earth warms, the atmosphere can hold more and more moisture. And so any rainfall event that happens has the ability to be more intense. So that's that's very clear. What's a bit less certain is exactly how these weather systems will change in terms of how often they happen, how strong they will be, and that's an active area of research at the moment. Things seem to have cleared up a bit now. Uh, rain has stopped in, in some areas. Is that it or is there more to come? Well, the Bureau's uh, three-month outlook indicates that there's a good chance that we'll be seeing above average rainfall in the coming months. So I don't think the show's over yet. Dr Kiara Holgate is a hydroclimatologist at the Australian National University. Bureau of Meteorology data shows while heavy rain has hit Queensland and New South Wales, northern Australia has experienced well below average rain. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield. Additional production and mixing by Chris Dengate. Okay, I'm going to stop it. Time to go. If they are going to cry and people are going to be sad or whatever it is, that they lost everything they own from the, from the start to the end now. And there's going to be a lot of insurance and uh, growing the vegetables and the fruit. Oh, well, well. Oh, well. Well, only God knows. And we're here. We're doing it. Providing you the future. So, whatever it is, keep it going. Because we're not giving up. We are military combined with our own mindfulness. Inspirational to, to intervene for our cultivating our farms, our supermarkets, our future. Subscribe and don't forget that I will fight to the end for my death as a part. Adios amigos. Subscribe. I love you.